you want to learn more about effective management, head over to madsingers.com and sign up for my free management training. Welcome to the Mad Singers Management Podcast from madsingers.com, where entrepreneurs and business managers learn and share. If you like the show, don't forget to leave a review. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Mad Singers Management Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Navin Jaitley. Welcome, Navin. Hi, Mads. Lovely for having me. Thank you. I am super excited today because you are an expert in one of the areas that I absolutely am not, which is the world of sales. And you worked in a few different positions, both in corporate sales and so on, and you now run your own business. But uh, I'll let yourself do an introduction because there's people around the world who haven't met you yet. So if you want to go ahead and just tell everyone a little bit about your background and how you ended up where you are right now. So much. So what I do is I work with business owners, I work with business executives, and I work with business leaders. And what I do is I, I do basically two things. One is I ultimately I help raise performance and get, have more success. And I do this mainly through really working on their inner beliefs, their inner mindsets, their inner emotions, because I'm, I'm a firm believer that everything begins from within before you start seeing everything on the outside. And that's what I do, especially when I go into working with business leaders and business execs, and I change the way that their teams think about themselves, about the, the roles that they're doing, and as I said, ultimately the success they get. The other thing I especially do with business owners as well is I change their relationship with sales. Okay. So I've, what I've found is there's a lot of fantastic, especially the smaller business owners, have fantastic products or services to give the world. And they're not really doing it justice because they're not comfortable with selling. So ultimately, that's what I do. The, the way I do it is, like I said, I, I focus on a lot of areas, mainly on the, what I call the inner game. The reason that's why it's, it's so important to me is my background. Um, I've been in corporate sales for over 15 years. And in my early days, um, which I call my kind of darker days now, I was very inconsistent with my performance. And at best, at best, I was average. And what I realized, it wasn't a skill set. It wasn't a lack of desire. It definitely wasn't because I wasn't hardworking enough. What it was, was the inner game that was going on in me. And it wasn't the inner game of a high achiever, a high performer. And once I understood that, I threw myself into personal development. I worked on myself. I became a very high achiever. That gave me the confidence as well to start my own business. Furthermore, it bugged me because a lot of training and coaching out there was very externally based, all based on skill sets, which is very important, don't get me wrong. There are certain techniques and skills you need to learn, especially in something like sales, but not enough of it was covering some of the other aspects which go more deeper. And so I set up my business and that's what I do now. And uh, you know, I wanna make an impact around the world and that's what I'm doing. Excellent. That sounds great. That sounds great. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, as, a, as a coach, the key thing I focus on uh, the most is probably around mindset, right? Because I think, I think a lot of the time, like, you know, when I, when I start working with people and I'm like, well, you know, sounds like you're not delegated enough. And they're like, yeah, I know I should delegate. And, you know, I just can't do it or I don't know how to do it and so on. And, and most of the time, it's, it's not that they don't want to do it. But it's the fact they don't have the right mindset in place to go and do it, right? And that's uh, it points back a lot to both inner working, but also just understanding the the wheel of things and, and understanding how things fit together, right? Um, and I think there's a lot of bad business practices generally in the world getting peddled around big time, right? Like the whole oh hustle, 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 work eight hundred hours a day, and you know show everyone else you outwork them and so on, where. Uh, the, the, the problem is, I mean, working hard is great, but if you're working on the wrong things, you never get anywhere, right? Exactly. And that's a bit like you're saying, like if, if the inner game isn't there, like you, you can put in all the hours you want, but that's not going to give you the results you desire, right? Absolutely. So let's, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about sort of the, the sales. I mean, because you, you worked in corporate sales for quite a while. Right. And I, I think a lot of the entrepreneurs I work with are, are definitely keen on both growing the sales. Like many entrepreneurs don't like doing their own sales, to be frank. I'm definitely, definitely one of many. 
Um, and I think also when they're looking to get people in to do it, they often struggle big time, right? It's not an easy thing to go and hire a sales guy for your company, right? Or for your organization. And it's not like a, yeah, it's not a, any kind of straightforward exercise to do so, right? So what, what sort of your experience and, and how, how do you recommend people go around that? Yeah, sure. We have had a variety of sales roles uh, in different countries, even in, in different industries. And actually, it doesn't really matter what you're selling, what industry you're selling it in. There are some basic principles that apply to everything. Um, and there are definitely, as I said before, there are definitely external skill sets that you can use. When I mean external, I mean nothing to do with your inner game. And I also teach them as well, because they are also very important. Um, but what I would say is, especially... Oh, look, Sales is the lifeblood of a business, right? Because if you can't make sales, you haven't got revenue, you just can't grow, you, and eventually you're going, to have, you're going to have to die, right? So I think first of all, I would say is the relationship with sales has to change, I think globally. And especially where I am in the UK, um, I think the sales and salespeople are seen in a kind of negative light. And they're seen in a light of being slightly underhand or pushy or overly persuasive and maybe not giving the respect that they deserve. And I think that also happens when people are talking about their own business. Because like I said, sometimes when I speak to entrepreneurs, they feel when I speak to some of their teams, it, they don't feel comfortable or they don't feel complete belief in their product or service. And they feel a bit awkward discussing it, definitely discussing something like pricing. So the first thing you need to do is, is really get your relationship with sales a lot better. And one thing I always do, especially if you're hiring salespeople, is find out their why. It's very, very important to know people, to understand why people do something. And, and also tap into your business why. Because if you know, so for example, my impact, my, sorry, my goal, my purpose is to impact the lives of over 1 million people, at least 1 million people globally by raising their performance, by giving them the success they wanted and ultimately the lives they want. So therefore, if I'm going in in a position where I have to sell, because I've got my own business, I have no hang-ups about it because I know the impact, my, my purpose is strong and it's big. And I say this to a lot of the CEOs I work with. I said, when you're hiring, especially salespeople, because it is a tough job, right? It's, it's on the firing line a lot. You want to understand why is somebody doing that job? Now, of course, people want to make money. That's part of it. But is that their only reason? Have they got a bigger why? And there's actually a... Um, a psychologist, Robert Diltz, who created the Diltz Logical Levels. Uh, I'm not sure if you've come across that before. He talks about all of what we do, and he, he splits it into six areas, which he puts in a, tri in a pyramid. And the top of the pyramid is your purpose. And below that is your identity, followed by your beliefs, your capabilities, your behaviors, and right at the bottom is your environment. And he says each level on top feeds the one below. So that's why, you know, I believe it's really important to understand your why, which is someone's purpose, because they have a very, very strong purpose, okay? And then that's going to be affect the way they identify themselves as. And that's going to affect the beliefs they have. And that's going to affect the capabilities they have, the behaviors, how they show up. And that's going to affect the external environment. So what I advise is initially, before you even go around looking at somebody's CV, and looking at their experience, understand why is it that they want to, A, be in sales, B, work for your business or in your industry. Because if that's powerful, that's a compelling reason, they will get through the rejections, you know, the hang-ups on the phone or in meetings. They're not hitting the sales targets. They'll get through that. They'll find a way because their why is strong enough. And that's the same for a business owner. No, always tap into your why, tap into your bigger purpose. And look at how you're identifying yourself. And are you comfortable with that relationship of how you're identifying yourself? Think about what the word sales means to you. Does it make you cringe? Does it make you think, oh, I feel a bit like a double hat, double glazed salesperson? <laughs> or does it make you feel like sales is basically extension of my business? I mean, I see myself as someone who makes an impact. Right. So therefore, sales is just an extension of me making an impact. I have no hang ups about sales. And that's not just because I come from a sales background. That's because the way I think about it, going back to the whole inner game.
Yeah. No, I, I totally get it. And I, I'm definitely, definitely one of these people that are not happy with sales generally. I mean, I, I, the way I do it is I make a fund that's so complex that anyone that gets to the end of it definitely want my service or my products. Um, like they're so desperate to get them that they go all through all the hoops and, and <laughs> challenges. So, uh, yeah, I mean, when, when people get on a call with me, they generally sign up for my stuff, right? Um, so I'd say my, my close rate is probably very high when I, when I get on the phone with people. But yeah, I, 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 I would say two things. I hate being sold to. So I hate being in these calls where people are like, oh, yeah, do you want to buy my stuff and all that? I, I hate that. Uh, and I think that's why I'm just as uncomfortable doing that to other people. Again, like I know my stuff works. I've worked with so many big names in the industry. And, you know, I've worked with, uh, I mean, uh, like I've literally never had a client that's unhappy for, I mean, I've been coaching for nearly 10 years by now, right? So, uh, I've, I've never had a client like demanding a refund or not happy with what the outcome and so on, right? So uh, I, I definitely I have solid trust in my product and my skill set, but it's uh, it, it definitely doesn't make uh, sales any more fun for me. I would say it's it's interesting, you know, you know how how you know how people feel about that getting on the phone and uh, and like I said, a lot of that is down to there are like you said, you don't like to be sold to. And I feel that there are a lot of people out there. There are a lot of bad salespeople out there as well, which, which gives the industry and gives the, the thinking around sales a bad reputation or a bad feeling. Um, but I think that that's the other thing. That's the other bit of advice I'd have is, is don't go around just trying to persuade someone for something that they don't want. And that's where it really begins. It all has to begin with whether you believe in your product or service and if it gives value. And if it gives value, you're not having, you're not having to sell anything to anyone. You're just outlining your benefits that are going to be important to them, and you are helping them make that connection in their mind. One thing I do believe in is sometimes the client doesn't know they need something, right? It's 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 like somebody who who's gaining weight bit by bit, and they might not think it's that important. They lose it, but you know if they carry on doing that, further down the line they're going to run into problems, and that's what some of sales is about. So sometimes there is an element of the customer doesn't realize, but you're not using underhand tactics to persuade them. You're just creating a logical argument in their mind, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally, it totally makes sense. And I, I totally get the whole mindset. Uh, the, the, the challenge I have is still like, it's not because I don't believe in service. It's not because I don't think it's valuable or the likes, right? But for me, it's just, I don't know, the, the calls are just always... Uh, I, I love talking with people. I love helping people. But the second I have to start asking them for money, at least for me personally, it, mm. it becomes difficult, right? And I, it, it's, I mean, I'm definitely better at it today than I was five years ago. Um, but it's, 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 yeah, I, I never, ever enjoy it. I think there's also someone like you, Matt, especially people who are in the coaching industry, right? We, we don't just do it for the money, right? We do it because yeah, we like Exactly, the exactly, yeah. So, so when you're asking for money, you kind of part of your subconscious is going, oh, this isn't really the main reason I'm doing it for, and now I'm having to ask for for that that thing, right? Um, now that's that's so that isn't there is an element of that's going to be natural. Now, what, one thing around that though, right? Here's the thing: I know if people don't pay, they're not going to get the results because so many times I've been helping people free, and I know every time I help people for free, they they don't do they don't follow up, they don't take it serious, right? That's so, so I know. Bad. I know they have to pay to get the results, but that's I'm 100%. still. That's hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent, and that's 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 such a good point you make. Like giving things away for free don't work because people no. don't take it seriously. They don't see the value in it. They don't put the work in, and ultimately nobody wins. Yeah, no, no, hundred percent, hundred percent, and and I even use that on myself. I mean, if I want to push myself, I just go and like if I want to, I don't know, take the gym or whatever, right? Like if I want to go to the gym. Instead of just saying, I want to go to the gym, I go hire a personal trainer. And I know if I pay the money, you know, I'm one more likely to show up and two, I'm more likely to see results because the guy or girl actually know what they're doing. And, you know, I probably don't. So, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's so true. Absolutely. You know, interesting. But yeah, it, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's definitely been one of my pet peeves for many, many years. And it's one of the things that, I, again, it's not even, I'm not even uncomfortable going on a sales call. It's just, I'm, I just hate when it comes to the pitching part or the, 
oh, this is my services and this is what it costs and stuff. Like I, I can say it, I can do it, but I don't enjoy that part. And, yeah. and it's funny because when I look at so many of my entrepreneurial colleagues, they're like, oh yeah, it's so fun. That's the good part because people yeah. don't pay money. And, you know, I'm kind of sitting like, yeah, but, you know, it's good to be able to pay your bills and stuff, but it's not, yeah, as you said, it's not really about the money. That's not the sort of core purpose behind it. So. Well, the other thing I do as well, Mads, is the way I think about sales is I, I believe that sales is education. Yes. When you're, when you're selling something, you're educating your customer as to the reason why they need it and especially why they need it from you. So when it comes to that pitching part, lots of people think, oh, I'm going to have to pitch my product or service. It's going to be your sales in. This is the part the customer's going to think, oh, this is the real reason why he's talking to me and all the rest of it. I see that as the best part because that's the bit where I'm educating them. I don't see it as I'm selling to them. I feel that this is the part where I'm educating them about something. And at the end of it, they're going to make a decision if they want to buy or not. If they don't buy, it's fine. But I've done my job of educating them. And I think when you start looking at sales, as, and I generally think of this now, if you, if you look at sales as being, you're being an educator, you're informing, then you lose all those inhibitions. And you actually start looking forward to it. So try that trick next time and see if it works for you. Yeah, I, I mean, I... I... I've, I've been through it. I've, I've definitely tried it. Again, I, I love the first part of sales calls and I, I pretty much tend to jump into coaching and trying to solve their problem before they get get far enough, right? But uh, but yeah, I've definitely been through it. Oh, but that's cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let, let's turn it around a little bit and say for small business owners like myself and others out there um, around managing salespeople, right? How do you go around doing that in a good way how do you how do you actually one hire the right salesperson so you talked a little bit about that and touched a little bit on that but two how do you actually manage them when you then hire them sure really good question really important questions because like i said before i think sales people are probably your most important hire that you're going to make um so one of the things i've done i've created my own model um, around the interview game which is called the ab tef model which is awareness uh, belief Look at someone's self-belief, clarity, clarity of your goals. D, you're dominating your thoughts. E is empowering and empowering others, especially. And F is fear, and your relationship with fear. And I, you know, I pass this on to CEOs I work with, and they've started using elements of this even in their hiring process. So I mentioned it before, but the first thing you want to know is you want to understand is what's the salesperson's purpose, okay? Which is, you know, have they got clarity of their goal? And what is their why, effectively? Yeah. And you want to you want to understand that because that's going to, like I said, it's going to help you to understand are they are they going to be able to get through the hard times without just relying on just a paycheck? Have they got something bigger that's driving them internally as well as externally? So that's one of the things you can ask with that. I think the other question I always like to ask is a salesperson in an interview is. You know, what do you want, where do you see yourself or what do you want to be doing five years from now? I know it's a very commonly used question, but I think it's, it's a very, very powerful question. And you really want to listen to the answer because a lot of people will just give interview answers, something that they think that sounds good. And you want to pick the person, you want to really make sure that the person, the, the answer they're giving, they've thought about it and it's genuine. And one of the reasons you can, one of the ways you can find that out is ask them why. So if they turn around and say, oh, in five years' time, I'd like to be managing a sales team in this company, why do you want to be doing that? What's your bigger purpose? What's your big, bigger vision? And I'll tell you what, people who have generally a bigger purpose, a bigger vision, and have thought about it, are just 10 times more likely to be successful. They'll be able to write it off their tongue. You'll be able to just see and tell. You, know, you can pick it up with instinct whether they're just making it up or not. And it's, I think it's a question that people don't, they just ask half the question. They might say, you know, what do you want to be in five years' time? And they'll take that person's answer. But you want to start digging down. Keep digging down into their why. So that's what it comes to. I mean, there's a lot There's a lot of things, but, you know, obviously in the time we have this podcast, I'll, I'll try to keep it quite brief. There's other sure. things you can do in the, in the interview process as well when hiring them. If I had to summarize with the interview process, it's really find out their why. I think more important than even the experience sometimes. Then when it comes to managing them, but this is the thing, and this is what I found in the corporate world, especially, um, but even when I work with, with businesses now, a salesperson isn't selling. So the first thing 
the manager or business owner does is, okay, well, let's start working on some of the external skills. Let's start looking at how they can close clients better. Let's look at their questioning they're asking, right? Let's, listen, let's look at how much they're listening versus speaking, right? Let's look at the industry knowledge. Don't get me wrong, Matt, this is all vital stuff. And I very much say, yes, keep working on that. But what they don't sometimes look at is, what is that person's state? Man, you might have had it in your business. Everybody's had it, especially in a sales career, where sometimes everything you touch turns to gold. Every meeting you go to, the client wants to buy from you. Every phone call you make sets up an appointment. And there's other times that literally you can't get anything right. And I always ask, why is that? How can somebody, what, and it sometimes happens month to month. It happened to me early in my sales career, where one month I was absolutely smashing it, and the next month or a couple of months later, I wasn't. Now, I don't think your skill set or my skill set had changed that much in a, such a short period of time. I don't think my desire had changed that much. What had changed is when I was selling versus not selling was my inner game, my inner belief, how much self-belief I had at that moment. So a lot of the time when some people aren't selling, it's not down to a lack of skill set. It's because for some reason, they've lost their belief. And that could be, it could be around the product or service they're selling. One of the things I used to say is, when I used to work in corporate, is my colleagues would often tell me um, about complaints that their clients had had about our product and service and why the competitors were better. And look, it's all very good to understand your competitors and know your strengths and weaknesses. But I used to say, I want to keep that to a minimum. I don't want to go into a meeting with any self-doubt about my product or service. In fact, I said, if you're going to tell me something bad, tell me about all the customers who love our product or service. So what it comes down to is your level of certainty, your level of belief. Now that's in your product or service, and that can be in, your, in yourself. Because when you're selling, a lot of the time it's because you've got rock hard belief and confidence. You go into a meeting and there's no, I call it the inner voice you have. There's no voice going, what if I don't close this deal? What's this going to mean for my job? Or what's this going to mean for my business? You're going in going, I'm going to sell this. I wonder how much, how many units the customer is going to buy from me? Or what price am I going to give this at if they buy in bulk? You, you ask yourself more empowering questions because you're in a more empowered state. So what I say to managers and business owners is before you start looking at the external skills, check in with them. Just even a simple question like, and it, you know, you're going to rely on them being honest, but on a scale of one to 10, how certain are you with this meeting coming up? How certain are you that you're going to be able to sell? One being lowest, 10 being highest. Just ask them that. And if they turn around and say something like a five or a six, go, okay, well, what can, it, what can we do to get you to a 10 or a nine? What are you feeling? What are you lacking? Is it a skill set thing or is it something else that you're feeling inside that we need to maybe work on? So self-belief and, and, and certainty is so, so important to sales process that I think a lot of management don't really look at. I mean, they'll, they get it. You know, if I explain this to someone, they go, of course, it's, of course that's the case. But they don't really do much about it. Right? The, and the other thing is very important to understand each individual because some people are the type of people who really get fired up if you tell them that I don't think you're going to do this, that gives them cannon fodder, right? That gets them like, right, I'm going to prove this person wrong. Well, other people, if you tell them that, that crushes their belief, right? So it's, a, it's, you know, it's an obvious thing, but know your, know your client, sorry, know your staff, a bit like know your customer, know your staff. And if it's someone who needs to be actually, if they're not selling, sometimes somebody needs to, you need to turn around to them and say, you know what, I know you're not selling at the moment, but I have absolute faith in you. That's why I hide you, because you've got this strength, this strength, this strength. We all have faith. Don't worry about it. It's, you're going to turn around. You don't need to worry about your job. They need that. And like I said, other salespeople will, will need a different way to get a reaction out of them. So look, there are just a couple of the ways that you, that you could do. It's, it's really understanding your, your staff. It's really working on their belief. And again, I think that's when, it, when you understand them better as in what's their purpose and what, how do they identify themselves. That gives you a better understanding of how they should be managed. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And, and I mean, so one of the funny things is I actually coach a ton of sales teams, um, but not on sales specifically, but in terms of personalities and how to how to approach it. Exactly as you said, like both how to manage different personalities, but particularly when you're doing sales, 
how to convert different customers. Because again, just like you have salespeople that are different, you also have customers that sort of come from different aspects and you know have different viewpoints and so on and have different personalities, right? So how do you actually address based on that? How do you address different types of customers, right? And uh, I, I do a ton of training on that, uh, particularly around uh, disk specifically, which is usually super, super successful. Um, but yeah, it's 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 always interesting for me that that uh, at least for myself, like the whole sales process is kind of absolutely. Disc's yeah. wonderful. I love yeah. I love the disc profile test. I think it's I I think I've done Myers Briggs. I've done a couple of others, and I think disc is the most accurate. So 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 I mean I I, I love disc to death, uh, and I, I I would say I'm probably the best person at disc that I've met. Um, I I don't generally believe wildly in tests, but what I'm a keen keen fan of is is being able to very, very quickly identify, uh, like in sales, for example, a prospect's natural behavior just by looking at them, right? And and usually if you're, if you're good, if you're solid with something like this, like you're talking 30 seconds, you know who they are. And it, it makes sales so much more effective when you can sell to them the way they want to be sold to, right? Um, so, yeah. yeah, and it's it's interesting you say that. So you know, we always talk about that. We want to we want to sell to people how they want to be sold to, you know. And again, it's like nobody really thinks about we need want to manage people how they want to be managed. Yeah, and one of the thing, you know, one of the things I, I always say is that ask someone, how do you like to be managed? I'm not saying you have to do it the way that they say because otherwise you'll you'll be forever changing your style. But at least ask them, you know, get ask that question of your staff. So how what gets the best out of you? In your experience in the past, I mean, that's actually a good interview question. In your experience in the past, right? What managers have got the best out of you and why? And then you understand how their brain ticks. Yeah. So, and, that, and that's important. one of my favorite questions. So I asked two questions. So basically, uh, typically I ask two questions, right? So who's the best manager you've ever had and why was that person the best? And who's the least good manager you've ever had and why was that person the, the least good, right? And for exactly that reason. Now, the, the one thing about a lot of human beings, particularly the younger, the more likely, is that a lot of people don't know themselves very well. So a lot of people might say they want to be managed one way, but it's mostly because they haven't had the experience yet or they don't actually know themselves very well. Um, so so that's still it's still important to take that into consideration, right? But but generally, I, I totally agree. And, and my, my whole management philosophy and management training generally is, is to... Um, basically don't treat people the same so that there's so many people who's like yeah you know in management you have to tr be fair and treat everyone the same but my philosophy is totally opposite that you should treat people the way they need to be treated based on their personality and your job as a manager as a business owner as a as a leader is to understand who they are and get the best out of them by treating them like that right 100 percent, 100 percent. the other thing i should mention as well when it comes to managing uh, salespeople. Like I said, my whole model goes through this in a lot more detail. But the other very important thing, in fact, this isn't just for salespeople, this is for everyone, but salespeople in particular, is a relationship with fear. Mm -hmm. Because just like belief, we all have a certain fear, different fears that we that you know we bring to work. It could be momentary, it could be something we're always afraid of. You know, typically somebody's afraid of public speaking, for example. Okay. And as a manager, what you can do is you can try to find out what at the moment is in your rep's mind, what are they afraid of? Okay. Because that's going to show up in how they perform. That's going to eat away at them. And then what you can do is you can work on how you can reduce that fear. Usually when the belief goes high, the fear gets less, but it could be you know, a separate fear on its own. And you know, in sales, one of the things they talk about is isolate, you know, for example, isolate an objection that a customer has. I also say, well, isolate someone's fear. If someone's feeling a bit nervous, you know, before a meeting or in general, why? What are they nervous about? What are they fearful of? Actually iso isolate that. And then you can work on actually reducing that. And there's different techniques around reducing fear as well, which I've got a whole separate module about. Um, but it's, again, just from a manager or a leader, a business leader's point of view, is really get to understand, I, I always say, is really get to understand your staff, especially if you're a smaller business, you know, 20, 30, 40 people, right? You're in a position where you're, 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 it's a smaller business. Your staff are absolutely critical. And you want to understand how they tick. 
right? I'm not saying go around becoming a psychologist, but you generally want to know, you know, what do they think about themselves? What's their identity? What's their values? What's their purpose? What are their beliefs? And what are they fearful of? And like I said, there's lots of different kind of questions you could ask, but it's just being aware to know about that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense for sure. Excellent. Any, anything else sort of around managing salespeople before we finish off here? Any last golden nuggets? Um, the only other thing is, you know, salespeople typically, they've always said, are, are driven by reward and recognition. Okay. And I think people sometimes have to underestimate the recognition part um, because people like to feel appreciated. It's, it's a tough job selling. Okay. And you, and you like the appreciation. It, and it's not just always about picking up certificates or, you know, picking up awards or going on um, exotic trips abroad. I mean, oh, everybody loves all that. Right. But it's just sometimes a day to day taking someone on the side and saying that well done for that and thank you so much for that because especially as a business owner you and explain the difference that they've made to your business and to your life because that will also motivate them because i still believe i'm a big believer in people buy from people right and people get motivated when they actually do when they can see an impact they're making and especially for people who are selling a product or service which might not be as um I don't know if altruistic is the word, but, you know, might not be as people oriented as something like coaching. You know, the good thing about what we do in the services we sell is we know that we're making an impact on people's lives. When we have sales teams, they'll know they're doing that. But if you're selling something like, I don't know, IT security products, it doesn't feel such a human angle. It feels like you're just selling a piece of software. But if you can make that more humanistic by either getting them to understand how that's making a difference for the, the businesses they're selling into, or even just how that's making a difference to you as a business owner, them doing a great job. How is that helping you? How is that making an impact to your life? And actually, how is that making an impact on other people's lives? Because that individual is helping that business grow, which means you can hire more people, which means you can rise, raise the salary of existing staff. How, and then suddenly you're impacting those people. You know, and once people just start, I know it's very obvious, but once people can actually start picturing the, the impact they're having, it motivates them so much more than even just giving them more money. So the, one final piece of advice is don't forget the human aspect. As a business owner, as a sales leader, you know, tap into your salespeople's human as aspects and their emotions to keep them motivated. Yeah, totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. Awesome. And thank you very much for joining me. I mean, that was fantastic. So thank if you. people are eager to get hold of you or see more of your stuff, where, where's the best place to do so? Sure. Uh, well, the best place is always my website, which is navinjakelycoaching.com. Yeah. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, navin263. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. But the best starting point is my website. Um, what I do is I work with corporates. I work with small businesses. I go in and I provide uh, training and coaching for teams as well as individual business owners and just in the, and even individuals who, who don't even run a business and also what I have is I have actually specially designed outside my my personal one-to-one -one coaching I specially designed courses as well so for example I have one coming up uh, actually just uh, next week on May 9th and May 16th which covers my inner game process an inner game model and goes into all of what I've been talking about today in much more detail. But what I would say is, you know, go to my website, navinjatelycoaching.com, or you can email me, navinjatelycoaching at outlook.com. And they're the two best ways initially to get hold of me. Perfect. Thank you very much, Navin. That was awesome having you with me today. Yeah, Mads, I really enjoyed that chat. And thank you very much for having me. Awesome. And to the audience, thank you very much for listening this far. It was great to have you here and we'll be back again next week. Thank you for listening to the Mad Singers Management Podcast. Please leave a review. It means the world to us. You can also learn more about management at madsingers.com.